Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Good morning, Calvary. Thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. Hope that your week has gone well. And it's great to have you here on this Friday. I got a question for you. What is greatness? Uh, or more, more specifically, how are you pursuing greatness in your life if you are? Because uh, our world finds so many different ways to define greatness. We define it in terms of finances and what our bank account or investments or our business looks like. We define it physically and in our fitness of, of how fit we are or what uh, accomplishments we can achieve and how fast we can do things or how heavy things we can lift. I don't define it that way, but maybe you do. There are other things, there's social and political and all these different ways that we define greatness. But most of the ways that our world define greatness is in terms of a tier, a hierarchy. We wanna be at the top. We wanna to be number one. We wanna be the highest, the best, the, the most outranking. And if we can't do that, we wanna be next to the person who is and be just close behind. And today we're gonna to see a passage of scripture that is very interesting uh, from the dynamics at play that give us a little lesson on what greatness is according to Christ and how we can learn from that in a way that, that I think will, will impact our day-to-day -day life. And we get to see a little dynamic of the disciples' mom uh, included here. And maybe you didn't think that they were involved, but check this out. Matthew chapter 20, starting in verse 20, it says, then the mother of the sons of Zebedee came up to Jesus with her sons, kneeling before him and asked him for something. Now, it says uh, the sons of Zebedee, if you don't remember, that's James and John. Uh, they were brothers and their mom comes up to Jesus with a request. And he said to her, what do you want? She said to Jesus, see that these two sons of mine are to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left in your kingdom. Jesus answered, you don't know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am to drink? And they said, we are able. And he said, you will drink my cup, but to sit at my right hand and my left is not mine to grant, but is for those for whom it has been prepared by my father. We're gonna keep reading, but I'm gonna pause there and think about what the question they're asking is. They're saying, hey, when we go to heaven, when we're all there in your kingdom and you're sitting on the throne, we wanna be on each of your sides. We want to be on your right and left hand side. We're saying we want to be greater than anyone else in all of human history. Can you just do that for me as a favor? Cool, thanks. Like that's what they're asking. That's such a bold and just incredible request that they would even think they could ask that. And I don't know where the mom got mixed in. Like, I don't know if it was her idea to like, hey, maybe if the three of us, if they're like, hey, mom, can you come and ask? I'm sure it'll be nice because our mom is there. I don't know the dynamic that was there. But, but they're asking for probably the highest level of greatness that could possibly be achieved for eternity. They're not just saying, hey, at this dinner, can we sit there? They're saying for all of eternity, we want to be considered more important than any other human being who has ever lived and served you, Jesus. Is that okay with you? And he clearly answers, no, I, I can't do that. And he, he references, hey, there's this cup of suffering is what he's referencing, this cup that I'm going to drink. He's like, I'm going to suffer, which is why I get to sit on the throne. You can't do that. And they're like, oh, yeah, we can. They would suffer and they would uh, be martyred, but not nearly the suffering that Jesus experienced. But he used this as a lesson. And the disciple, the rest of the disciples, it says, when the 10 heard it, verse 24, they were indignant at the two brothers. They're like, I can't believe these guys, which is probably a little bit of like, they're ridiculous for asking that. And then probably 50% of like, man, I wish I would have asked for that first. Um, but then Jesus called to them and said, you know the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them and their great ones exercise authority over them. It shall not be so among you. He's like, it's not about positional authority. It's not about ruling with greatness. He says, but whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And whoever would be first among you must be your slave. Even as the son of man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. He says, hey, you guys have missed the point here. Greatness isn't about position. It's not about being first. It's not about being the most significant. He's saying greatness is about serving. Greatness is about laying your life down for others. Greatness is about building others up. Greatness is about reflecting the heart and the character of Jesus. 
So I don't know where you find yourself as we you know, are still in the beginning stages of the year 2024. Maybe you're still ambitious with your goals. Maybe those goals contain aspirations of greatness. But let me, let me encourage you, if you want to be great, be a servant. If you want to be first in life, understand that you need to be last like a slave, as Jesus mentioned here. If you want to succeed, don't think about yourself, but thinking about how you can serve God and serve other people, and you're guaranteed to succeed if that is your goal and ambition. Because the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. If we can make it our ambition to be great in replicating the life of Jesus, where our ambition isn't to be served, but to serve, and to give our life to help other people, and we're going to experience some greatness in our life, in our marriages, in our careers, in our family, our parenting, our friendships. Because Jesus says, hey, if we want to be great, we need to serve others. We need to, to put ourselves not in first or even second place, but last. And think of others more significant than ourselves. So I hope that it, as you think about what greatness looks like in your life, you would equate it to being great in the eyes of Jesus which is not seeking to be served, but to serve and give your life to help other people. Hope you have a great day, Calvary. We'll see you next time.